Hey everybody! Today, Rado runs through Valparaiso, which is a programming Euro style game, and I'm going to be showing you how it works today in a two player run through. Although, before I get going, I strongly recommend you turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. And if you've done so, then welcome to Chile, everybody, and the lovely coastal city of Valparaiso, where I am already set up. One of my little merchants is here. One of or my only ship is in harbor. And as part of setup in reverse turn order, players also got to put a merchant out in one of the hinterland villages. And if I were to flip this board over for a higher player count, there's another village over here. We also start with 20 pesos, another merchant waiting to be hired, although with three or more players, there's two merchants waiting to be hired. And also, as part of setup, we each chose to start with three goods in our warehouse. I started with one of each, food, copper, and silver. Jen, she just started with three copper. And we are ready to go. And how does it go? Well, it's all about these programming cards, these actions we can take. What every player is going to do right off the bat is choose, at the beginning of the game, four or five of these cards that they want to play over the course of the round. And we do this in secret. We do this simultaneously. And if you're playing the advanced version of the game, we do it with an active timer, which creates an incredible amount of stress, as you might imagine. Now, I should point out, the rules are very, very clear. The first few times you play Valparaiso, just leave the timer in the box. It's not until you become really familiar with how the game flows that you should do this. But if you're going to play with this, what happens is everybody starts programming, you know, choosing the four or five, or later in the game, six cards that they're going to play, and putting them around their board. And once somebody is done, they can grab this, flip it, and that means everybody else has one minute remaining to get their programming done. Whoever finished first gets one good of their choice for free, which is a very, very big deal. So you're really incentivized to go as quick as possible. But if you go as quick as possible, you might make mistakes, as you might imagine. Now, I, in this run-through, am not going to use this. I'm under enough pressure just to play for two players as it is and keep track of what I'm trying to do. Do. But remember, if you want a greater challenge, a bigger rush, you've got this in hand. Although I should say, for people who see this and say, oh, I'm never going to try to play the game, you can enjoy this game greatly without ever using this. In fact, if you don't use it, it almost adds kind of a bluffing element to the programming game that disappears if you're too busy racing against the clock to program. So, you, you could play this game dozens of times and never once use this and not really be missing out. But if you really want to take it to the next level, like speed chess, you've got this available. So anyway, let's put it aside and I'm going to start programming now. As you can see, I started out with all these cards. Jen has a deck of the same. And I got to decide, what do I want to get done this round? Well, I know one thing I want to do is I want to hire this third merchant. So I'll have a group of three that I can put to work. That's why I chose to start with one of each resource. Because you can see, with this card, if I spend those resources, I hire the guy. Uh, Jen, she is obviously not going to be doing that because she started completely differently. And by the way, the rules say that everybody has to start with a different starting collection of goods. So Jen, she started with goods that she is going to want to sail overseas to engage in trade with a foreign power and give herself another card. She's going to deck build a little bit, for lack of a better term. But anyway, so I'm definitely going to play this card. But what I haven't decided yet is, is it going to be my first, second, third, or fourth action that I'm going to do this round? Now, actually, there's another choice. If I pay five pesos, I could put it in this slot. So it's almost like uh, act zero. Um, it's a way I can do more in a given round and I can go first because once we reveal everything we programmed, resolution order might make a really big difference. Anyway, I know I want to do that. What else do I want to do? Well, if I've got a merchant, I'm going to want to pay to get that uh, get that merchant walking through the jungle to go join the merchant I've already got out here in the jungle. So I'll go on ahead and take that card. And while I'm at it, since I've got so much cash, I'm going to want to build a house. At the beginning of the game, each player has four houses or buildings waiting to be built. And it's really important to build these. Once you've built two of them, you unlock another slot to program with. And once you've built four of them, you actually get an extra victory point, which is a big deal because this game is a race to 18 points. Once somebody hits 18, that triggers the end of the game. And this 18 points can sneak up on you pretty quick. An extra point for having built all your houses could make all the difference. 
So anyway, so of the four actions I'm doing, I'm hiring a guy, I'm having that guy walk through the jungle, I'm building a house, and then the last thing I'm going to do is, once I've got a house built out here, I've already got one merchant who I put here as part of set, I'm going to get another merchant out here. Once I've done all that, or maybe even two, once I've done all that, I'm going to want to engage in trade in this town because everybody I've got will have been deployed here. So... Let's say those are the four actions. Like I said, if I wanted, I could pay five pesos to open up the governor's mansion and do a fifth action, but I'm going to try and save my cash, especially since I'm paying so much to build this house. Okay, that's it. So these cards, I am not going to be using. I will not, I'll be programming with them in the future. And these other ones, they have to do with you know, moving my ship around, loading or unloading my ship. Um, oh, wait, this is not my card. I thought that was weird that I had nine cards. This is a card, it's a B card, that should be deep down in this deck of cards that will be showing up later in the game. Because as part of setup, randomly, I put out all the A upgrade cards. And then we've got this deck of B1s and B2s. Yeah, I thought that was weird. Yeah, these are my starting cards. Eight of them, not nine of them. And so... This is one where I can sell a cube to get money if I'm desperate. Um, this is one that my ship can actually give up cubes to get those cards that are waiting in foreign lands. But I'm not going to do any of that this round. Okay, boom. Jen, meanwhile, she should have the same eight cards. And I think, just so I can show you guys a bit of variety, she's going to do the opposite. I'm going to try and do some business inland. Jen, she's going to set sail. Although that doesn't do her any good unless she first loads her ship up with goods because at the beginning of the game it's empty and once she sets sail and gets out there she can engage in trade with uh foreign powers let's see that's three of her four actions and you know what she is definitely going to start out by building a house too building these houses is so important that's pretty much something everybody's guaranteed to do the first round maybe the second round and then you really got to decide because once you've built two and you've got that extra uh, programming space that's great but then do you spend time and money when things are getting tight building more houses so, Jen's got her four, I've got my four. Now, like I said, if Jen wanted, she could pay five pesos and do an extra action. But she can't do this because she doesn't have the resources for it. She could have people traipse around in the jungle. Or she could do business in the jungle, in all the, the surrounding villages. Or she could get some more money. I don't think she's going to do any of those things. So, we know what we're doing. And remember, if we were playing with a timer, we'd be trying to do this as fast as possible. We know what we're doing, but we also have to say what order. Jen will... First thing she's going to do is... Now, and by the way, you should be putting these face down. I'm just going to put them face up because I don't want to have to reveal them all later once everybody's programmed. First thing she's going to do is build a house. And let's see. Then the next thing she'll do is she will load up her ship. She will set sail. And she will um, engage in trade. And that's it. Like I said, if she wanted to pay five pesos, she could. And in fact, maybe she should. Because here's the thing. If Jen tries to build a house right from the get-go. She could either build it over here in this village she's at, or she could build in Valparaiso itself, because she's got a merchant here, and she's got a merchant here. Here's the thing. Jen doesn't know what I'm doing, because kid, it's secret. But if the first thing I do is build a house, well, both of us could potentially build in Valparaiso. Whoever goes first would get to build in this spot, which is a sweet spot because it gives you income of three extra pesos every round for the rest of the game. And that could make or break you. Money gets tight, tight, tight in this game very quickly. So if Jen wants to build here, she might want to take a step, specifically because she knows I'm the first player, so if we both do something at the same time, the tie would break in my favor. Um, if Jen is willing to pay five extra pesos, she could do this before I do whatever's in my first space, but she'll have to pay. You know, she takes a, And you physically have to do this. You have to put a fiver on it, so you have to pay up front to reserve that, but then Jen could guarantee build in the village before I go. Now that's if she's worried. Um, and uh, you know, sometimes when I mention there's potentially bribing, sometimes you look over at your opponent and you see, oh look, they they put they pay they're paying money to go ahead of me. That means they probably want to do something that I want to do, and they want to beat me to it. I should figure out what they're trying to do, or but maybe they're not. Maybe they're trying to do something else. Maybe they just want to do five actions instead of four this round. Who knows? So the mind games can really start popping up, uh, especially when somebody goes to the governor's mansion. But the question is. Five of Jen starting 20 pesos, plus five more to actually build. She'll be broke pretty quick. That's not great. 
I don't think she's going to do it, but I just wanted to mention, you could. She could do that. And there will definitely be times when you're worried, when both of us want to build in the city, or both of us have a ship out in a specific area, and we both want to grab the same card. Who gets to go first? Well, maybe you pay five extra pesos to do it. But anyway, Jen has programmed herself in. Me, I'm going to build a house. I'm going to hire a merchant. I'm going to have my merchants go on a walkabout and I am going to engage in trade. Pretty standard opening moves. All right, so everybody's programmed, and now everybody reveals, which, as I've said, I've already done, and I am going to go first. And Jen's worried, oh, no, I'm building my house right off the bat. Does that mean Jen missed her slot? I'm paying my 10 pesos, I'm taking my first house, and I am not building over here. I'm building out in the jungle, where, because I built here, I just got one victory point. Woohoo! Only 17 more to go. Okay, so I built there, and, uh, and my turn is over. So I, this goes back into my hand. All the other cards slide down, so that'll be my next action. And now Jen says, yay! She builds where she wanted to build. She, oops, uh, she didn't actually do that. All right, so she pays 10 herself, takes her first house, builds over here. She doesn't get any victory points for it, unlike, say, building in this house, but she's going to get income for the rest of the game. And now, if anybody else, or if Jen in the future, wants to build in Valparaiso, they will occupy the next space. If they occupy this space, they get one silver cube at the end of every round for the rest of the game, which can also be a really big deal. All right, so we've both done our first action, and now we do our second action. It's back to me. I'm going to pay my three goods in my warehouse to hire this little fella. Hi, chum. Boom. Okay. And I take the card back. And I haven't mentioned it yet, but I should say, when this card came up, I had a choice. You always have a choice. I can do the main action of the card, or I can do the minor action of the card. Because maybe, after my opponent had done something, what I'd planned to do doesn't really benefit me anymore. I might change it up and say, oh, instead of doing this, I'll do this. Or, if we were playing with the timer, and I literally chose the wrong card, or I put it in the wrong place, and I'm like, ah, this is not the time to do this. Well, you can always do the other thing instead. Or sometimes you'll just do the other thing because you need that that extra little bit of resources or what have you. All right, so I've hired my guy, and these slide over. Jen is now going to load her ship. All right, which means she can take up to six goods from her warehouse and put them into the ship if the ship is in harbor, which at the beginning of the game they are. So one, two, three. Now this is kind of a bummer. If Jen had six goods, she could load it up completely and get a victory point. Uh, so this is kind of inefficient, but Jen is rushing out to sea so she can get a new card that's more powerful uh, so she can use it um, for longer. All right. So anyway, so Jen is loaded up. She doesn't get a point because she didn't have extra stuff. Okay. Third action of the round, I am now going to have my guys move. Now, this is, I can activate all my guys. They can all traipse around along these roads to go to different villages. Um, but the first step they take is free. The second step anybody takes costs me one peso. The third step, if, if they move three steps, it costs me four. This is not five total. It costs me one to move two steps or four to move three steps. And I can move all of my guys. The guy who's already out here could head you know, off somewhere else. These guys could move around. Now what I want to do is I want one of these guys to come walking to get over here, to join the guy who's already here and my house. Because remember, the fourth thing I'm going to do is I'm going to engage in trade. So I'm going to want to do that. So I will have him go. This didn't cost anything. That was one step. And now this cost, that was my second step. So that cost me a peso. So I'm down to nine bucks. Uh, boo. 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 All righty. And remember, I can activate all my guys. So I could have this guy go walking as well. I could have him walk to another village. Um, now, if I do that, that means I, if I have nobody in town, I can't build a house in town. But since I'm about to engage in trade with the villages, I want to be in as many villages as possible. So, where am I going to go? Well, I could uh, walk 1-2 to get over here, or I could walk 1-2 to get over here and join Jen. Now, I don't necessarily want to do any trade here because Jen is here. If you do trade in a village where your opponents are, um, well, you get to do the action that's queued up, which is great, but you have to pay your opponents one peso for every um, meeple they've got in town. So I'm not coming over here. I'll spend another peso. It's free for my first step, but one for two steps. I'm going to move over to this town, which costs me another peso. So I'm down to eight pesos. Okay. And that was that. My guys have gone on a walkabout. All right. 
Jen, meanwhile, Jen has her ship set sail. She can move two spaces, which means your ship can always reach any of the available areas. From here, you could go here. If we started here, we could spend one, two, and go over there. Jen is sailing up here because these are the nations that want her copper, which is what she loaded up on her boat. So she's done. And now the last action of the round is I am going to engage in trade. And this means I can trade in any village where I've got a merchant. It's not good enough just to have a house. A house by itself can't trade. But if I've got a merchant, I can trade. And the more merchants and houses I've got, the more I can do it. It'll be a more powerful action, which I will now show you. Okay. Uh, first of all, let's do this one. This is a simpler one. This guy moved up here. And it says, one, two, or three times, I can collect a copper and a food. Um, the number of times I do that is based on the number of tokens I've got here. I've got one, so that means I get to do this once. I get a copper and a food, and I put them in my warehouse, which has no storage restrictions. The boat does, but the warehouse doesn't. So this guy is done. These guys, there's one, two, three of them. So I'm gonna get to do this action three times, which means I get three more copper and three silver. Boom. So I went from zero to hero. I have got a ton of stuff. One, two, three. Boom. I am loaded. You better believe next round, I'm going to load my ship up to the brim and get that extra victory point. And in the meantime, I've got a whole bunch of goods. All right. So that was it. I engaged in trade everywhere where I was and I am done. And like I said, if I had engaged in trade in this town, I would have had to give Jen a little taste. I would have had to give her a peso, but I didn't go there. I went over here instead. Okay. Jen's last action. Finally, she is going to give up the three cubes in her hold to get one of those cards. And you'll notice there's a little reminder here that under certain circumstances, you also have to pay 10 pesos. That's if you're grabbing a B card. At the beginning of the game, as part of setup, we randomly put out all the A cards. These are all free. Um, once these start going away, we're starting to grab B cards, which are very, very expensive to grab. But as you might imagine, they're even more powerful. So Jen's up here. She um, is paying her three silver to whatever nation this is, and she can take any of these cards and add them to her deck. So she's got this one, which says every round for the rest of the game, if Jen's willing to give up two cubes, she can get a victory point. Or instead of that, she can get five pesos. Plus this card itself is worth two victory points. So Jen can do that one. Jen can do this one, which is uh, like you saw, you can engage and trade with the villages, but you have to pay five pesos to do it. So this means you could engage in trade twice in a given round at a cost. That's very powerful. And this one, which is also worth two points, uh, lets Jen move um, one space for free. Two spaces only cost four. So it's cheaper for her to deploy her guys to the various villages out in the hinterlands. So these, I think Jen's going to take this one. This is going to be the basis of a points generating engine for her. Every round, she's going to want to play this and give up two cubes to get that point so she can scream up the track and win the game. All right. And like she already is, it, she it doesn't show, but she has two victory points. She These victory points won't be counted, though, until the end of the game, once somebody has hit 18. So she has made her deck bigger. And now, to fill in the gap, we have our first B card. This is just a straight up get 10 pesos. No alternate action. 10 pesos is always nice to grab. It's actually interesting. This is the same as this level A, but this one's only worth two victory points. This one's worth three. But to get this, you got to pay 10 pesos to get it, whereas this one is free. Now, there's one other thing. You may have noticed, hey, there's five pesos just sitting out here. This is first come, first serve, um, which is why. Remember I was saying, if um, both Jen and I had had copper, and we both set sail to the same place, you better believe you want to go first because whoever did it first would have gotten those five pesos, which is why sometimes it's worth paying to go first with the uh, at the marriage. Anyway, so Jen took that. The, the money is gone. Her ship is empty. On a future turn, she's going to have to spend an action having it sail back to port so she can load it up again. But for now, she's done with her ship. And we are done with the first round of the game, folks. So there's a few things that happen at the end of the round. The uh, player order changes. Now, it potentially has to do with who's built in Valparaiso, but in a two-player game, no matter what, it always changes hands. Um, if I recall correctly, at a higher player count, it goes to whoever most recently built in Valparaiso, if I recall. I might be wrong about that. As always, folks, please watch with the Klingon subtitles turned on, uh, in case I misspeak. Uh, but anyway, so, Jen's going to be first player, and... Jen, because she's built in Valparaiso, remember, she gets an income of three pesos. I did not build in Valparaiso. I get nothing. Instead, I can do more powerful actions in this turn. Oh, shoot! I totally forgot! Totally forgot! Totally forgot! 
Remember, folks, Klingon subtitles. I'm sure if you had them on, Paulo already warned you of this. After you do the trade action in a village, there's a very important last step I totally forgot to do. I did this one first, and what that means is I take the action I did, I put it up here in this queue at the top, slide all the other ones down, and what comes out the bottom goes back to the village I'm in at the top. So you get this kind of conveyor belt of new actions. Now, if anybody wants to do an action in this village in the future, it's they can do it up to five times if they've got five people in town. They pay two pesos to get two different cubes. Uh, all right. So, uh, so this town is now not quite as exciting because before, hey, I got them for free. But I can get more of them. And I get to choose what cubes I want, which could be a big deal if I'm trying to set collect for certain reasons. You know, most notably, sailing uh, across the sea. All right, so that happened. And then I did an action over here. So this one also went to the top of the queue, slid the other ones down. This one came out, and it comes over here. So now, um, on the next round, hey, I, it's the same as the first one. I can get up to, up to three times two copper. All right. So I'm sorry, so that should have happened as soon as I did the action, which is why sometimes it's scary. If both players are in a zone and they both want to do an action, they both want to do this action, whoever did it first makes this go away, and then suddenly the next action is in the queue, which is maybe one you didn't want to do, which is why turn order can be so important. All right, but anyway, that wasn't the case. We were over here like this. Right, so I totally forgot to do that. Right, back, sorry folks, back to the end of the round. Jen got some income, and also we have to see who has the most uh, buildings in Valparaiso. That person gets five more pesos. That's Jen. She's all by herself. So Jen, if things stay like this, Jen gets eight pesos at the end of every round, which is huge. So as you might imagine, I got to get building in this town. But right now, I can't build because I got nobody there. They're all out in the forest. Well, that's the other thing that happens at the end of the round. In any given village, you can only keep one merchant um, if the village doesn't have a house. So I can keep this guy here to do this action in a future round. But over here, because I built a house, both of these guys have to beat feed all the way back down to Valparaiso. And now I got to spend money and time and actions to get them back out into the hinterlands. And I want them to come back out here because this is an awesome action to do. And I've already got this house set up so I can do it more and more. Now this guy, I can let him go back to Valparaiso if I want, or I can let him stay. And the interesting thing is, um, if I let him stay, hey, he's only one step over to here if I want to do this action. So I'll keep him up there, even though this village isn't a particularly useful one. Uh, or at least I'm not that excited about spending money to get cubes. Although maybe I am if I'm looking for a specific set. All right. Now, there's one other thing I haven't mentioned. I, I've talked about building houses in Valparaiso. I've talked about building them out in the village. You can also build them at these waypoints along the roads. There's one off of each of the main roads out of Valparaiso. If you build a house out here, it's a customs house. And what that means is, first of all, you get points, which is a big deal. And for the rest of the game, when you move through, you do not. It's you get to skip that space. So, like, you know, if Jen built a house here, normally she'd have to go 1 2, which means she'd have to pay pesos. But because this is here, she gets to skip this and go straight here. So she can move her people for free. So if I want to move my guys into this uh, village over and over and over again, I'm always having to pay a peso because I have to spend two spaces. But if I build one of my houses here, not only will I get three points, but it then becomes free for me to keep moving and then coming back and moving again. The other thing is, if Jen builds this house here, and I ever want to move my guys out, they have to pay customs, two pesos, to go past Jen's house. So that is the other use of houses in the game, if you build on those waypoints. Right, so that was it, folks. That was the first round of Valparaiso, and hope you have a pretty good idea of what it's all about. But if you'd like to watch a little bit more, you can hit that eye up in the top right corner screen and go to the extended playthrough, or instead, you can go to Final Thoughts. Your choice in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1...